started here tonight, um, you know, Father Gallon and I are living together, and uh, we were just sitting in this room by the fireplace, which you see going right now, in the Madonna. Um, and we were sitting in here, but before he left, he he took his cell phone with, and uh, so he called his sister. And I'm ready to start here, and I'm looking for my cell phone so I can watch what's going on, on, on as I'm doing it. And uh, uh, he took my cell phone. So I have an iPhone, so I use my Apple Watch, and I kept pushing the button. I could hear it ringing somewhere in the house. And finally, I found it in his room. He was standing there. I said, that's my phone, not your phone. <laughs> he said, oh, okay. <laughs> but anyway, so we had a good laugh at it. Uh, July 11th, this is a beautiful day, first of all, and this is the uh, memorial of um, St. Benedict. Benedict, of course, is a great saint. He is uh, the Benedictine Monastery. Benedictine nuns, Benedictine brothers and priests, all all came from um, the Order of St. Benedict. And uh, it's the largest, I think, in the world, actually, right now. Um, and the, I think the largest Benedictine monastery in the world is um, St. John's in Collegeville, Collegeville, Minnesota, St. John's. And... Um, so anyway, I uh, just thought I'd bring that up to you, that that's, that's what we're celebrating today, the memory of St. Benedict. In fact, I was going to leave a little bit, uh, Father Gellin used to be an associate, I think, a Benedictine associate. So here's a little about him in case you don't know. You probably, most people know about St. Benedict, but I'll read it. Benedict was born in Nursia, in Umbria, uh, I can't and studied in Rome, but he was unable to stomach the dissolute life of the city. He didn't like the city life. And he became a solitary hermit at Subiaco, which later became famous. As his reputation spread and some monks asked him to be their abbot, but they, after they asked him, they didn't like the discipline he imposed and tried to poison him. <laughs> he, he survived. And so Benedict organized various small communities of monks and nuns in various places, including the great monastery of Monte Cassino. That's the great Benedictine monastery. And he drew up the great Benedictine rules to guide the communal life of monasteries. Uh, the rule of St. Benedict has proved so wise and balanced that it has served as the foundation of practically every attempt at communal living ever since and not just in religious communities. And the rule of St. Benedict recognizes that people, what well, the rule recognizes that people aim at perfection, but often fall well short of it, and aims to be a rule for beginners, that's what his rules are, in which even the least perfect and least able can grow in spiritual stature. Um, and so that, uh, if you ever get a chance to visit a Benedictine monastery, like the one at St. John's in Collegeville, Minnesota, and they they have it open to public uh, night prayer, uh, probably morning prayer too, where you can join join in the church. You can come in this beautiful church, and you can come in there and, and uh, hear their beautiful canting of the psalms, and it's very very nice. But anyway, that's so that's a little bit about St. Benedict, and he also his thing is to put. Every, Christ before everything. Whenever you begin any good work, you must you first of all make a most pressing appeal to Christ our Lord to bring it to perfection. Um, for we must always serve him with the good things he has given us in such a way uh, to honor him. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, and that's, you know, that could be done, like he says, in a practical way. Um, you know, you're going to visit somebody. You can say a little prayer on the way to visit them. You're going into uh, someone's home for dinner. Well, 
pray for your your uh, hosts that have invited you to the home um anywhere anywhere we're going uh, it doesn't have to be just at church that we offer a petition to the lord for whatever it is we're about to enter into or about to do and that's that's always a good thing and and then the readings this weekend also relate to that the gospel especially jesus planting the seed on rocky ground um weedy ground or whatever and and good soil well the soil is our soul and we nurture it through prayer so it doesn't have to necessarily be long extended prayer It'd just be little small prayers like i say when you're traveling somewhere like before usually before i set out on any trip it could be around the corner I have a prayer I say the Lord uh, protect me on this journey sort of it's a, it's a protection and journey prayer but I say it all the time and then if I go in the grocery store and I come out of the grocery store I say it again once once the car has been shut off and I start it again I say it again and so I think that's a something to think about in our our Benedictine way of life is to uh, pray at all times when coming and going and everywhere else it, it keeps our mind focused on the Lord. You can get an app, by the way, I have one, that uh, um, every hour it um, brings up a scripture verse, just a short scripture verse. Um, and and uh, it's amazing how that does the difference. Every hour I get it, it beeps and I look, oh, there's that script, new scripture verse. And sometimes it, 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 it relates to just about what we're about to do in God's providence. Like tonight, before the 5 p.m. Mass, just when it's about ready to start, the, uh, a verse came up on my phone, and it said, How shall I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. And what was I about to do? Take up the chalice of salvation. Call in the name of the Lord. So providence is always working in our lives. So find a way to offer little prayers for the day or a little scripture passage, like one verse, or find an app that will provide that for you and remind you to look at a verse throughout the day. With that being said, let's now uh, open up our, our uh, night prayer. And here we go. O oh God, come to my assistance. O oh Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Turn to the Lord now, asking for his healing from the day for our faults and our sins of omission or, or sins we have committed. We ask his mercy and healing in our lives this night. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Now that the daylight dies away, by all thy grace and love, the maker of the world we pray to watch our bed above. Let dreams depart and phantoms fly, the offspring of the night, Keep us like shrines beneath thy eye, thine eye, pure in our foes despite. This grace on thy redeemed confer, Father, co-equal Son, and Holy Ghost, the Comforter, eternal three in one. Excuse me. Psalm 4, a psalm of thanksgiving. Have mercy, Lord, and hear my prayer. When I call, answer me, O God of justice. From anguish you release me. Have mercy and hear me. O oh men, how long will your hearts be closed? Will you love what is futile and seek what is false? It is the Lord who grants favors to those whom he loves. The Lord hears me whenever I call. Call him. Fear him. Do not sin. Ponder on your bed and be still. Make justice your sacrifice and trust in the Lord. What can bring us happiness, many say? Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put into my heart a greater joy than they have from abundance of corn and new wine. I will lie down in peace and sleep comes at once. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. 
Have mercy, Lord, and hear my prayer. Psalm 133, Evening Prayer in the Temple. In the silent hours of the night, bless the Lord. O come, bless the Lord, all you who serve the Lord, who stand in the house of the Lord in the courts of the house of our God. Lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord through the night. May the Lord bless you from Zion, he who made both heaven and earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In the silent hours of night, bless the Lord. And here's a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. The word of the Lord. How this reading tonight focuses us, us on to focus, like I said, the Benedictine rule to throughout the day to offer up little prayers. And that's one way of fulfilling what's in the scripture reading tonight. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Think of them, talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise. Those little arrows of love is what they are that go out to uh, to the heart of God when they come from our heart uh, uh, just a completely aside but a little comment about the Eucharist I heard this the other day I have a, a Carmelite nun that I'm bringing communion to and it's just a joy to talk together every day visit for a little while and they mentioned about how seven days without the Eucharist makes one week, W-E-A-K. She put her head down and she shook her head. And she said, you know, more like it puts you into a coma. <laughs> and I thought, that's good. That's a good one. So we need the Eucharist and we need it often. So just keep that in mind. Into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. You have redeemed us, Lord, God of truth. Into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. Protect us, Lord, as we stay awake. Watch over us as we sleep, that awake we may keep watch with Christ, and asleep rest in his peace. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people a light to reveal you to the nations in the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Protect us, Lord, as we stay awake. Watch over us as we sleep, that awake we may keep watch with Christ and asleep rest in his peace. Let us pray. Lord, be with us throughout this night. When day comes, may we rise from sleep to rejoice in the resurrection of your Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the all-powerful Lord grant us a restful night and a peaceful end. Amen. Here's a, a Marian hymn, Mary from Thy Sacred Image, it is called. Mary from Thy Sacred Image
well, I'm going to go for Saturday night prayer. Hope you have a beautiful day of resurrection tomorrow and a beautiful Sunday. Stay safe, enjoy the day, and remember tomorrow's a day of leisure. Um, naps are okay. Uh, but it's a time to enjoy one another too. Socialize with their family members and, um, and to grow in the Lord. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, and I'll see you tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, Central Daylight Time.